All right, we are back on Morning Line. Our guest this morning, Metro Vice Mayor Jim Shulman, taking your phone calls. We've got some lines open, 737-7587. Just talking about the city, some of the issues going on here, whether you live here, obviously that's of a concern to folks, but if you don't live here, you know you come and visit Nashville, and you probably have questions about the city, why they're doing this this way or that. Give us a call if you would uh, like to join the conversation. We have uh, some uh, folks commenting on Facebook or streaming live at newschannel5.com. Uh, Brian's asking, yeah, okay, a lot of people asking this, potholes, we're going to fix them, the weather's getting sunny now, and it, it's like an obstacle course on a lot of the roads right now. Isn't it amazing? Oh, it's unreal. It is it's just amazing. It's in years. So, um, two questions, and I don't know anything right. about road building, okay. <laughs> but one is, um, <laughs> is there something we can put down so we don't have these things, you know, in the first place, when we, and I don't know. But, I mean, that would be the first thing is so that we don't have as many potholes. Yeah. But when we do, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday. It's like, if you give me a bag of whatever it is, if I see a pothole, you know, mm -hmm. which is dangerous, but you yeah. don't, and you probably don't want me out there yeah. fixing it. But some of these things will eat cars. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, you mean, saw some big ones yesterday over in Dyersburg, right? So I was in Dyersburg yesterday. There were craters that looked yeah. like... That if you if you got in there, you weren't going to get out. Yeah. Um, and then I we were talking about it last night in uh, District 29. They had a candidate for them, and they were um, they were talking about potholes, and they were talking about filling them with uh, dirt, mm -hmm. so at least it didn't you, your car didn't go down as far. Yeah, well, I mean, the dirt is going to pack. Yeah, I mean, okay. it depends on how but hard it, it packs. But if it rains, it could wash out. I would think. Sure, but I mean. I don't know. I mean, we certainly do not necessarily, I mean, that's not the citizen's job, but at some point people will find ways to take care of a situation that doesn't get addressed well, by the government. That, well, and is that part, do you think the issue here, and I thought I read somewhere where it's 30 to 40 potholes a day minimum that some of the crews around here are dealing with, and some of them big, they take a while. Yeah. So is that is that getting back to we don't have enough money or there aren't enough crews right now with public works to get this done? Is that yeah. another symptom of this we were talking about earlier? I, I don't know, but okay. I do know from being around government for a while that when government can effectively deal with a problem mm -hmm. and in this case if if it's potholes that people find alternative ways or entities come up with different ways of solving those problems well I know you don't want people out there on the interstate I know. or some of these busy roads <laughs> filling potholes right but you don't want it to come to that but if it's a problem then I think it's one of those things where eventually some entities will come up with a very clever way of doing it that is cost efficient, cost effective, that is safe, and we'll start trying to figure out how to do that better. So if right now we're not able to take care of all the potholes that are out there or we're filling them too slowly, then um, I don't know, maybe some innovative person out there who can invent a machine just that goes, that goes through, that fills them up so you don't have people putting the stuff in, takes care of it, doesn't back up traffic for a long time. I got stuck in traffic yesterday on the interstate coming back. Yep. Pothole fixing. Yeah, brutal. Well, they're talking about potholes. And by the way, we're having, a, I think probably it's going to be Paul Deggins, uh, the chief engineer for TDOT, coming on on Thursday. And right now, you know what he's busy with over there on uh, the, the uh, mudslide. Mudslide yeah. or the, the landslide, whatever that is. And that's going to take maybe until March 5th to clear. So I-24 coming in is blocked. You have all these things coming up. And transportation's a biggie. I wanted to hit you on this. Nowadays, you come downtown and you just see on a Friday or Saturday night, the congestion is unreal. And I'm talking about not just the cars. All right, the scooters. Okay, they, they're pretty much here to stay, right? The Bird and Lime scooters, they're here to stay. They're here to stay right okay. now, yeah. What else is going to come? Next, we're going to have motorized skateboards, maybe. We're going to have maybe rentals where you can rent small little mopeds. We already have the bicycles. And then we have all these hybrid, tra you know, the pedal bars, the, the, the tractors pulling some kind of... You don't want to come down here and drive. And, and of course, you know, we had a transportation plan which ended up dying. We, it was too expensive. But I, I don't see any progress being made on transportation besides just bringing more modes of it. Well, so we have to revisit all this. Well, when are we, we're never going to get a new transportation plan. It's going to take forever. No, I think, I think you can. I mean, I, based upon what happened last year uh, with the vote, it was like 65-35 against, there were many many people who said you know we need something but we don't like that plan so if you don't like that plan we need to have different plans mm -hmm. one of those plans has to be much more effective in terms of trying to deal with downtown traffic or we're going to create ourselves a problem which we already have yeah. and that is that people who 
I, I've heard of a lot of people, particularly like for people who used to like to go to the symphony, yeah. they stopped going. Yeah. Because they don't want to go downtown on a Friday or Saturday night. Not to mention the parking. Yeah. The last time I went down on a Saturday night, it took me, uh, it took me an hour from uh, where I live in Green mm -hmm. Hills to get downtown. And people <laughs> may say, well, yeah, whatever. But, I mean, it used to take 15 minutes. Right. It took me, you know, the regular 10 minutes to get to downtown, and it took me 50 minutes to get three, st three streets. I couldn't move. About that. Um, and so what are we going to do about it? So do we need to on, um, you know, I, I think you need alternative ideas. Do you need to shut down some of those streets, you know, like from 2nd to 5th on mm -hmm. Friday and Saturday night and let pedestrians walk around and then have traffic flow around it? With police help, or yeah. or do you just and then you simply do you do you ban scooters right downtown, you know, right in that little yeah. area, so that everybody can just be pedestrian friendly and have the scooters drive around it? Look, I I'm not an expert on that one either, I know. but I'm sitting there looking at this, going, something has to go. It's unreal. You know, I I came here and I never thought I would say this. You know, I, I came here to Nashville from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We get we're getting Los Angeles style traffic. I mean, it's it's unreal. That's what it's becoming like. I mean, not on that scale, but it's it's similar in a lot of ways. And the, what hit me is what you just said. I don't mind driving half an hour if it's at speed limit and I'm going 30 miles. Okay. What I don't like is a half hour to go three miles. That's a problem, and that's happening now. Well, remember, you used to go from like uh, it took me went from Charlotte Avenue, and I was trying to get over to 12th. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me 45 minutes. It's crazy, isn't it? I was like, wait a minute, forget it. And if it, I think it was raining that night. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like from now on, I'll just walk it. Yep. Because I could have walked it faster Fast. than I drove it. And you're right, throw rain into the mix and everything gets much worse. Yeah. Let's go next to Vicky. Vicky, good morning. Hi, Vicky. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I was calling about uh, the uh, MTA van, uh, buses. Sure. I mean, vans, the excess ride. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Vice Mayor, y'all got to do better okay. with the MTA vans. Y'all need more vans than these cabs out here because they mistreating disabled people. Well, so you, you uh -oh. use the vans? What's happened? Where, where do you catch Sometimes, your van? So, uh, from my home. Uh, like okay. I go to the store and different places and sometimes the cabs don't even pick you back up. And I heard a lot of people say, say that. and. I guess they'd be scared to speak out, but I'm speaking out, okay. and I'm gonna say what I have to say. Sure. And that's not fair to us. And we paying three forty to take us there, and three and three forty to bring us back home. That's not right at all. So I guess my question, Vicky, would be: um, um, Are they picking you up on time, or are there problems with that? And then, uh, at least on the initial part of the trip, and then you're saying that they're not picking you up on the back end. Sometimes they don't pick me up on time, okay. and sometimes they uh, don't pick me up at all. And uh, like they'll call to see where they at, and and they'll say they on their way, and never do show up. And then I had to call somebody else to come okay. back and pick me up because I'd be stranded out there, yeah. and okay. that's not right and not fair to us. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So um, let me do this because I've done this on this show before. Mm -hmm. uh, Vicky, uh, you can you can call me. Okay. Um, so my number is um, I'll give it to you twice: six one five five eight four one zero eight two. That's my cell phone number. Um, sometimes it gets backed up. Just um, you can send me a text or keep calling: six one five five eight four one zero eight two. And let me know, because what we do is we take this stuff and we turn it in. Now, I was going to ask Vicki, it's like, have you turned it in? And, but she would, she might say yes, but didn't get handled. Mm -hmm. We try to handle it. We can't solve every problem. But I think the idea is, um, is to keep pushing to try to drive efficiencies in the system. You know, we get this every so often with Access Ride. By the way, is Access Ride where you can call ahead of time and, and you get them to come pick you up? Yeah, they this come is, pick you up, and then a, these are the vans, not necessarily uh, van right. K buses. All right. So um, again, um, okay, what okay, happens? Yeah, what okay. what happens is um, if this system doesn't work, eventually somebody else will come forward with a better system that will work. Mm -hmm. If we can't provide a, an efficient service, and to me, it's. If we're picking up someone who might have a disability, mm -hmm. um, then we ought to be there on time 
and then if they go to a doctor's appointment Especially and they're finished, there for them to get home. then we need to get them home. And it needs to be like door through door. I mean, we need to be able to help them into the van and then help them to the doctor and then bring them back. And I know there, there are groups, volunteer groups, other groups that are already starting to work on this mm -hmm. because the need is there. Well, and we'll give out your phone number again before the end of the show sure. if she couldn't grab it. But that, this goes to the heart of why I wanted dedicated transportation. I was a big supporter, and I don't live in Metro, and I would have been glad to pay for it. A, a dedicated rail system or something. Because when I heard people say, well, we can still get by with buses, you're just wrong. You're not going to get by with buses. Buses can be part of the equation, but depending on buses or vans that are subject to the traffic flow are going to make it by definition inconsistent and unreliable. And that's just the fact. Unless you decide to put separate bus lines that no other traffic it can go in. It's just the truth. A wreck, it's not the bus's fault, but they're stuck. It's just buses. And I had to depend on buses once in other cities I've lived in, and they'd get me there, but I'd be late half the time, or they'd show up late half the time, and um, it's, depending on buses saying that's going to cure it, we don't need dedicated rail or whatever we decide on is just flat wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I think... I mean, that's uh, just ridiculous. Uh, look, I mean... Depend so on the, buses, no. So the thing, um, the original proposal went down. Mm -hmm. significantly went down. We back up and do it again. Uh, th it was sort of like, uh, oh, even if we had passed it, we would be having this, <laughs> because, oh, because know. you know, you can't fix it overnight. But you have to look at it, you have to look at the patterns. I mean, I go out on, you know, on a Thursday afternoon at four o'clock trying to go from here to Cool Springs, uh, and it's a mess. Yeah. And you're going like, <laughs> ha what is going on? Uh -huh. Um, so the traffic uh, so this, you're right. this issue hasn't gone away. We're going to bring it back and we're going to talk about it. But I think was, what yeah. we have to encourage people to, to come forward with ideas and we have to do a better job of listening to the overall plan and coming up with something because that people say. it was say. the big cost. Cost is really what got people oh, in. Sure. I, I have no doubt there's probably better ways to do it. But here's the funny thing about it. Everyone was balking at the cost. Here's a news flash. You know, there may have been at that point ways to maybe shrink the cost a bit. The longer we wait the more it's going to cost down the road. It ain't going to get no cheaper. It's just not. And it's like, oh, well, let's just put it off. You think it's going to be cheaper 10 years from now? What world are you living in? No, but I think there was another part to it, and that was um, most people vote mm -hmm. on these things based upon cost. Mm -hmm. But also, what's the impact? Mm -hmm. How is this going to help me get right. to my job well, or important. go downtown or you know, go to the grocery store if I need to? Um, so it has to be looked at from a much larger perspective. Cost is one thing, and I know people would be concerned about that. But in the end, does it make sense? Do people look at it and go, I could use that? Mm -hmm. I think it has to, I think we have to do a better job, or everybody has to do a better job of understanding how it impacts areas of the city and individuals. I know you have a meeting to go to. We've just got a few more minutes before sure. you have to leave before the end of the show. So let's squeeze a few more phone calls in. That's, that's cool. We'll go to uh, Tony. Go ahead, Tony. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, it's Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Hey, we'll get good morning, next. Nick. Hey, Nick. Uh, yes, uh, Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any possible way that to help some of the traffic uh, employers be asked to, to stagger times of businesses, <laughs> uh, et cetera, the state, et cetera? And also, I remember back in the, mm, I'm pretty sure it was the mid, oh, probably 2004, 2003 somewhere along there uh, we had a snowstorm and um, we were letting schools out at the time and they let the state employees off before they did metro schools so that really uh, clogged up the roads and getting the kids home yeah, a real good question i know you don't have much time but mm -hmm. the idea of having staggered out times especially if it could be state employees be nice, but I don't, you can't really tell an employer when someone can come and yeah, go. Yeah, but work. I mean, I think Linda's right. Yeah, I mean, she makes a good point. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the points are well taken. It's, um, it's uh, so I'd say maybe it's something better, and that is coordination. Okay, so that means we got problems. Why aren't we coordinating? So she was talking about the the snow situation. Yeah, that time. It's like let's let everybody out at the exact same time so we have massive traffic jams. Yeah. So, you know, if we could find a better system based upon what Linda's saying, it's like maybe the groups could call each other and say, okay, here's the situation. You have a kind of emergency group in the schools, Metro, State, yeah. uh, Vanderbilt, all the, you know, HCA, all the big employees, whatever, and you go, okay, so 
Uh, the schools are going to let out at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. All right, just be aware of that because if you let your employees go home at <laughs> 10 o'clock, they're going to run into the, mm -hmm. so you, you stagger it. Mm -hmm. So she's got a valid Step point. Forward. Listen, yeah. before you go, let's give out your phone number again. This is his cell number. Text him, right? If uh, sure. you can't Call get through. Sure, call or text. But uh, yeah, 584-1082. Yeah, 615-584-1082. Jim, thank you. Vice Mayor, sure it's thing. always a pleasure having you come on. I know you do this, and you'll do uh, Open Line with Ben Hall, and we really appreciate your access. Uh, always happy to yeah. talk about these we'll things. We'll do it again, sir. Okay. Thank you. We'll Sounds take good. a break. Uh, we're not done with the show yet, but he just had to take off early. If you're still on hold, stay there. We'll try to get to some of your calls right after this.